Hello friends, welcome back to 12th physics animation series of physics and animation. In the previous video, we dived deep into the concept of electric potential and potential difference. We learned in detail how much electric potential a point charge generates at a specific point in space. In today's video, we will begin by exploring how the electric potential at a point is affected by the presence of multiple point charges often referred to as a system of charges. And then, we will shift our focus to the electric potential at various positions of an electric dipole. If you are interested in understanding the basics of dipole, you can find a link in the description box. The first topic is very important because it will help us to better understand electric potential due to a dipole. Most importantly, the last case of the electric dipole. Before we proceed further, let's take a few formulas that we derived in the previous video which are going to be helpful in this video. In the previous video, we understand that the potential difference V is equivalent to the work done by a charge in an electric field. In this context, if we need to do one joule of work to move a one coulomb of charge from one point to another against the direction of the electric field, then our potential difference V will be 1. This unit of measurement is also known as 1 volt. Furthermore, let's define the concept of 1 volt potential difference, which we missed in the previous video. The potential difference between two points is defined as 1 volt when 1 joule of work is done to move a positive charge of 1 coulomb from one point to another against the force of electrostatics. In addition to this, we have also derived the formula to calculate the electric potential at a given point due to a point or source charge which can be expressed as V equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into Q by R. For the sake of convenience, we can denote 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught as constant K. And now we have the simplified form, V equals to KQ by R, where R is the distance between the point charge and the point where we want to calculate the electric potential. It's important to note that the potential difference V is an scalar quantity. Now let's move on to the first topic. Electric potential at a point due to a system of charges. To understand this concept, let's consider three charges, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Located at different distances from a given point P where we want to calculate the potential due to these charges. Charge Q1 is at distance R1 from point P. Q2 is at distance R2 and Q3 is at distance R3. Now the point P will have electric potential V1 due to Q1, V2 due to Q2 and V3 due to Q3. As we know, electric potential is a scalar quantity. Hence the overall electric potential V at point P will be the sum of V1, V2 and V3. We can express V1 as KQ1 by R1, V2 as KQ2 by R2, and V3 as KQ3 by R3. Since electric potential is not a vector quantity, there is no vector addition involved. We can directly calculate their combined effect through simple addition. Similarly, when we are dealing with multiple n number of charges, we can compute the electric potential at point P by summing up electric potential due to individual charges. All right. Let's now discuss the electric potential due to an electric dipole. As we know, a dipole is formed by two charges with equal magnitudes but opposite polarities positioned at fixed distance L from the center O of the dipole. Just as we derived the equation for the electric field of a dipole in its axial, equatorial and general position, we will now derive the equation for electric potential in those same positions. Let's begin with axial position. Suppose we want to calculate the electric potential due to a dipole at point M which is positioned axially at R distance from the center of dipole. Observing the scenario, we can see that point M is at R minus L distance away from the positive charge and R plus L distance away from the negative charge. In this case, we need to calculate the net potential at point M due to both charges. For the positive charge, the electric potential is V positive Q. 
and for the negative charge it is v negative q as we know potential difference is a scalar quantity therefore the net electric potential at point m can be expressed as v net equals to v positive q plus v negative q where v positive q is equal to k times the positive charge q divided by distance between the positive charge and point m which we can represent as r minus l similarly the negative potential v negative q is k times negative charge q divided by the distance between point m and the negative charge which is r plus l now here kq is common in both so we can take it outside the bracket we can proceed to solve the remaining equation by cross multiplication by simplifying the numerator we obtain 2ql which is recognized as the dipole moment and denoted as p the denominator simplifies to r square minus l square since the distance l between the charges of the dipole is typically very small l square becomes negligible consequently the final equation for electric potential becomes v equals to kp by r square where r is the distance between the center of the dipole and point m okay let's place point m at right angle distance r from the center of the dipole we call this position the equatorial position now we are going to figure out the electric potential at this equatorial position notice that in this case the point m is the same distance away from the positive and negative charges we can find this distance by the pythagoras theorem the distance will be the square root of r square plus l square for both negative and positive charge now in this case the electric potential at point m due to the positive charge will be v positive q and is calculated as kq by distance which is now the square root of r square plus l square similarly the electric potential at point m due to the negative charge will be v negative q and is calculated as k negative q by distance which is again the square root of r square plus l square as a result the net electric potential at point m will be the sum of v positive q and v negative q if we substitute the calculated values of v negative q and v positive q we ultimately ends up with the net potential of zero and an important observation to make here is that at the equatorial position of the electric dipole the net electric potential is zero now let's discuss the final case which is the general case when point m is neither in the axial position nor in the equatorial position in this scenario point m is at different distances from both charges let's say that point m is at distance r from the center of the dipole o and it forms an angle theta with the dipole's axis the positive charge is at distance r2 from the point m while the negative charge is at distance r1 here our essential task becomes calculating the distances r1 and r2 which will help us in calculating the electric potential at point m to do this we need to understand a basic geometric concept in reality if we consider the dipole the distance between the charges denoted as 2l is much smaller compared to r meanwhile the distances r2 and r1 from point m to the positive and negative charges respectively are also significantly larger in this scenario if we draw a line from the positive end of the dipole intersecting perpendicular to the line om let's call this point of intersection p we can observe that r2 is approximately equal to pm similarly extending a line from the center o of the dipole and drawing a perpendicular line from the negative end of the dipole to intersect at point s now we can deduce that sm is approximately equal to r1 by applying the congruency of triangle we can conclude that os and op are also equal let's denote this common length as x now based on this analysis we can express r1 as r plus x and r2 as r minus x to determine x we know that 
here cos theta can be written as x by l which gives us x equals to l cos theta. Substituting these values we find that r1 is approximately r plus l cos theta and r2 is approximately r minus l cos theta. Now we can calculate the electric potential at point m. Similar to what we have done in the previous cases, the electric potential at point M due to positive charge Q will be V positive Q equals KQ divided by distance between positive Q and M, denoted as R minus L cos theta. Similarly, the electric potential at point M due to the negative charge will be V negative Q which is equal to K negative Q divided by the distance between negative charge and point M which is R plus L cos theta. Calculating the net potential V net, we sum up V positive Q and V negative Q, which leads us to an equation in the form of KQ by R minus L cos theta minus KQ by R plus L cos theta. By factoring out Q and K, we will have equation in this form. Simplifying this, the numerator becomes R plus L cos theta minus R minus L cos theta and the denominator becomes r square minus l cos theta whole square. As we know, l in a dipole is very small. Therefore, l cos theta whole square can be neglected, essentially treating it as zero. In the numerator, when we open the brackets, l cos theta will become 2 l cos theta and plus r minus r will become zero. Now, in the numerator, we finally have 2 q l cos theta where 2QL represents the dipole moment, denoted by P. Considering the general case, the final equation simplifies to Kp cos theta divided by R square. This provides a general formula that enables us to calculate the electric potential at any angle and distance R from the dipole center. Okay. Now in this equation, if we place theta as 0 degrees, the cos theta becomes 1 which gives us the electric potential at the axial position that is Kp by R square which we have calculated earlier. Similarly, when theta is 90 degrees, cos theta becomes zero, resulting in zero electric potential at the equatorial position. In this way, using the general formula, we can calculate the electric potential at any angle and distance R. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video.